since you brought it up a second ago about him potentially running in 2024, is he? Because that, that seems to be the general consensus. And right now, I don't know that there's a better candidate out there. Guys, what I'll tell you is, I mean, this whole thing has taken a great, you know, toll. I mean, don't, certainly don't cry for us, but our lives are substantially better outside of politics, right? I, I've always, I've always said that politics is a nasty world. Um, you mentioned it with lawsuits and this and that. Everyone is gunning for you. I mean, you can't. There are no mistakes. There are no anything, right? If you're in that game, mm -hmm. when you see, we fought our asses off for you know that thing behind you, which is called the American flag, red, white, and blue. We love this country. Uh, we love this nation. We love the military. We love our cops. We love what was at least the strongest country in the world. And, and I, I hope we return it to that. Otherwise, guess what? My kids and your kids and everybody else doesn't have a future. But I don't think anybody else can win. I got to be completely honest. I don't think anybody else has the kind of gravitas to win. I don't think they have the actual backbone to fight the fights that you need to win. And by the way, even if somebody got in there, you know, I've had kind of the back. I've had a look into kind of Washington, D.C. politics where it takes people and it changes them instantly. You know, people run on this notion of going in and making real difference and everything else. And then they get into the system and the system poisons them almost immediately. And, you know, I kind of hate to say it, once in a while you actually might need that brash, very un -PC, you know, real estate guy from New York to go in there who just does not give a damn, who cannot be bought and sold. Because, man, I, I can't tell you how many politicians I've met, you know. The lovely people, they talk a big game. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do this. They, they're in the system for about three seconds before they're totally bought and paid for and sold. They lose their backbone. They lose their spine. The Washington Post does one hit piece on them. And guess what? You know, they totally render them ineffective. I can't tell you how many people within, frankly, the administration that happened to. I mean, yeah. you see time and time again. Yeah, yeah but it's a, I, I think that's... Uh... For somebody like your dad or, or anybody like him, uh, uh, maybe DeSantis as well, I think that's a good thing that that type of environment e exists because it lets you know pretty much immediately who the fucking weak cowards are, right? I mean, there, there is some damage that's done when there's turnover in your administration, I guess, and, and, and the media, certainly as, as antagonistic as they are towards conservatives, are going to press that issue as often as possible. But at least at the end of the day, you shed the dead weight and you know the people that are working with you are good. Now that is only if the fucking leader is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Every leadership starts at the top and goes down. It does not go the other way. And if we, we do not have a leader in this country right now. Not, Dan, not, not you, one bit. Yeah, go back to 2016, all right? And I'll give you actually two little stories. Go back to 2016. Was anybody in the Republican Party fighting? No, right? I mean... It, Meaning pre my father getting in there. Do you think Mitt Romney would have taken on the fights that my father did? Of course not, right? He's a feckless coward and he wouldn't have taken on the fights. I mean, I remember with my father with the military, he was telling, you know, a great story one day where, you know, every every night, this is like the first week he was in office, every night he's getting, you know, woken up. You know, some you know, guy at the Pentagon calling up, hey, we have this terrorist, we want to take him out. Finally, like the third night, he goes, Guys, why are you calling me? You know, well, sir, we just want to get your permission. The last administration made us do that. He goes, Where do you go to school? The guys, you know, West Point or were you a good student? Yes, I was a very good student. Do me a favor. If a bad guy needs to go, take him out. Tell me about it in the morning. I mean, certainly, if you need to call me, call me. <laughs> but, like, do your job. Like, like, and, and I have your back. And, you know, like, we never had that before. And you didn't have the fighting class in the Republican Party. Like, you know, and, and now you look at a lot of them. And, God, it's, uh, we have a lot of good fighters now, right? You still have some dead weight, but you have a lot of good. Look at Jim Jordan. Look at the mm -hmm. job that he does. I mean, the guy is absolutely relentless in terms of fighting. Look at Gates. Look, there's so many people out there that go out every single day, and they fight for what they believe in. And it's very different than the rhino-class Republicans who, you know, were there who would never fight. They would cave to everything the Democrats wanted. And I actually think he did instill, instill a little bit of the fighting spirit in our party, and we never had that before. The Democrats used to walk all over us because mm. we never had the fight. And, man, the other side, they are slimy, and they will do whatever they can do to get power. And you see it, again, the weaponization of every single system in this country, and they've been working on that for decades. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things I think you need to run, uh, though, is, is social media. Uh, I saw your brother, uh, DJ TJ. I don't know if he called himself that or if that nickname was given to him, but I love it um, and let him know that's that DJ TJ is one of my favorite nicknames of all time. Uh, he posted one of the very first, it looked like a, a tweet from Truth Social. Um, is that supposed to launch soon? Yeah, more to come on that. We're keeping a little bit under wraps, but I think you're going to be really, we need it. We don't have, we don't have it. 
I mean, I, guys, I'm on Twitter. I've got a lot of people. I'm on, you know, Instagram. I'm on my Facebook. But they shadow ban the hell out of us. I mean, same I'll with us. Yeah. Certain, I'll still post certain articles, and I mean, you just. You see zero engagement when you have millions of, you know, millions and millions and millions of people. And then you see somebody post crap content that has one tenth the amount of, you know, followers as you have. And all of a sudden you see their engagement go through the roof because their content follows the narrative of whatever, you know, whatever they're talking about. I mean, look at the vaccine stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was taken off, you know, the different social plan platforms I banned for seven days because I, you know, I posted something that, you know, even th that was actually true today. But that questioned the authority at the time. And that's a very, very dangerous thing. That's a very dangerous thing. I mean, when has censorship in the history of the world ever led to anything that's good? Yeah. I mean, did censorship lead to anything that was good in China? How about Nazi Germany? Did censorship lead to anything that was good? And well, how about Venezuela? How about Russia? You, you know, you question the, the leader in you know Russia and half the journalists have been killed. I mean, when has censorship ever led to anything good? Well, for, forget about it just in the sense of uh, running a government. You're a business owner. We're business owners. Uh, censorship inside of a business, it is a meritocracy or it fails. That's how business works. Uh, and that's certainly how foreign policy has got to work uh, with regard to uh, uh, strength and war specifically. It's the ultimate meritocracy because if you lose, you die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so forget about just just inside of government or or censorship from an authoritarian government at its very base level censorship is completely uh, uh, antithetical to good positive results right you you are you're operating with less data and information than you need to make an informed decision like that that's fucking stupid yeah yeah and will truth social be different like i'm assuming just by the way you're talking that censorship will not be an issue on this social platform no, of course not. I mean, listen, there's some censorship that you need, right? If somebody starts posting, you know, naked pictures of, you know. Well, ironically, Twitter lets you, go, Twitter, right? but Twitter yeah. lets you do it. Twitter lets oh, porn stars yeah. post all the time. No, I'm not talking about porn stars. You have some pedophile maniac mm. that starts posting pictures. You need, you need to certainly be able to censor that, right? But no, it is a free speech platform. And it's something that we just don't have in this country. And you have all these platforms that talk about wanting to be free speech, but they're not actually free speech because you have some dork that's in, Silicon Valley is 25 years old. That's putting their fingers on kind of the scales of justice. I mean, every one of us has one of these phones, right? Yeah. I mean, go look at Apple News on any given day. I mean, you've got some young kid, again, in Silicon Valley, is picking the stories that he wants to put up. And why is it that it's always Donald Trump, something that's negative, something that's negative about myself or some other member of the GOP, yet you have Biden who can't get through a sentence, who is making every single blunder, and yet every single day they prop this guy up. You know, guys, I'm a pretty straight guy. I'm the hardest working guy. I'm in the office super early, leave super late, have a great family, great kids, believe in discipline and, you know, live a very healthy lifestyle, no drugs or anything else. I get slandered every single day yet, you know, on the opposite side, you know, my, I guess what you'd call a counterpart, I feel bad saying that's a counterpart, Hunter Biden, he's doing crack, yeah. you know, banging <laughs> hookers, um, you know, dating, you know, dead X, Y, you know, dead brothers, ex-wives doing all sorts of other things, embezzling money from China, taking diamonds from all over the world, doing all sorts of other things, you know, traveling on Air Force Two to foreign countries, sitting on energy boards of, in industries that he knows nothing about. And so this guy gets fast. I mean, guys, Dan, if I was finger painting right now, I know nothing about painting. I'm not exactly the, uh, the painting type, right? If I was finger painting and going out right across the street and selling my paintings for half a million dollars while my father was in office, it would be called capital punishment. Yet this joker gets away with it every single day. I mean, you know, and they give him the pass. Yeah. Can you imagine?